Hello there. Today I want to take a look at a wine from California that is from a really historically significant producer. So this is Chalon Vineyard's estate grown Chardonnay and this is the 2021 vintage of that. And Chalon is historically significant because these are some of the oldest vineyards still existing in, in Monterey County. In 1919 a Frenchman by the name of Charles Tam decided that the soils here and the climate were very similar to those found in the Cote d'Or in Burgundy. He saw the red topsoil and the deep limestone soils that lies the, the slopes here and felt that this was a, a great place to cultivate vines. The vines he chose to plant, strangely, weren't Burgundian, they were, they were Chenin Blanc. So here we are in the foothills of the Gavilan Mountains, looking out across the Salinas Valley, pretty much opposite the Santa Lucia Highlands. These limestone slopes are at an altitude of around 500 metres above sea level. And the limestone soils, which have patches of granite and some clays interwoven into them, are, are very good at restricting vigour for the vine. So, you know, these are good wine growing soils. I'm not sure that the original venture was a great success, though, because the Shalom name itself doesn't come around until 1966, when somebody called Richard Graff, who had bought the property a year earlier, releases his first wine under this name. There had been some additional plantings here in 1946 as well, but clearly they weren't particularly successful. But expansion went ahead in 1970 and a replanting programme was initiated in 1998. Currently, there are 101 hectares of vines here. These are predominantly Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, but there are also plantings of these very old Chenin Blanc vines. There's some Grenache and more recently Syrah has been planted here. In fact, I believe there are plans to buy some more Vedra fruit and make a GSM blend. Chalon changed hands a number of times. In 1984, it became, it was floated, it became a limited company and was part of a group involving a number of other uh, wineries, both in California and further north in Washington. 2004, however, it was bought by the large international wine and spirits group Diageo. They, however, decided to divest themselves of their wine interests in 2016 and uh, found a buyer in Bill Foley. So the, the winery became part of the Foley family group of wineries, so involving other wineries such as Sebastiani and Chalk Hill in California, along with a, a really fine portfolio of New Zealand wineries as well. Shalom's other claim to fame was its part in the famous 1976 Judgment of Paris tasting, where it, the uh, Shalom Chardonnay that was entered there came third in the white class. Which if you choose to, to see the judgment, judgment of Paris as being this, this seminal turning point in the, the future of, of um, California's wines, makes this a historically very significant brand. The wine says it's from the Chalon Palation, or AVA I guess we should say, the AVA was formed in 1982, and it sits actually within the Monterey AVA. As already mentioned, we have this sort of 500 metre above sea level altitude, which means the vineyards here lie above the fogs that can find their way up the Salinas Valley. The soils, as already mentioned, are limestone, but with granite as well, and a certain amount of clay. The San Andreas Fault runs, runs through the AVA, so in places that sort of mixes up the soil types. The fact there aren't any fogs here, ensures that there are good sunshine hours, so it's fairly easy to achieve ripeness. However, there's a lovely cooling sea breeze blowing its way up the valley that helps to moderate the temperature. And in fact, there's a really large diurnal range so that the day-night temperatures vary significantly, ensuring that the grapes can retain their acidity relatively well. The blend of this particular wine, it's 100% Chardonnay, but the majority of the blend consists of fruit from vines that were planted in 1972. There are other plantings used that were planted in 1986, and those used the budwood from some Chardonnay planted here in 1946. So there's quite a historical ethos going on here. Four different vineyards, all belonging to Chalon, were used here. I have those listed as the Reservoir Vineyard, the Vista Vineyard, Macwood and Strip. Planted in those vineyards, there's a range of clones. So you have Clone 76, Clone 95, a very popular clone, Mount Eden, and unsurprisingly, the Chalon clone. Traditionally, Chalon was one of the first places in California to use the approach of barrel fermenting Chardonnay, putting it through malolactic conversion and aging it in French oak. 
Not surprisingly, that approach is still used. 33% of the oak used is new wood and maturation goes on for nine months. I think it's generally considered that there was a dip in quality at Shalom under Diageo's ownership. However, by 2021, the winery has been owned for five years by Bill Foley. And actually in March of 2021, Greg Freeman, a new winemaker, was appointed here. So this is his first wine in charge of this winery. And hopefully we'll see a resurgence in the quality of wines that come out of this famous estate. Let's see what we make of the wine, shall we? First thing I'd say, you've got a medium, really quite vibrant, really lemony yellow colour. It, it's not that dark, but it, it's very sort of bright. I'm swirling the wine. The, the wine is leaning to the glass and very slowly forms some quite, uh, prominent tears on the glass. And, and then I note that the alcohol is 15% according to the label. So that's not a huge surprise. Let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? Instantly, there's a lemoniness that comes comes through, and then you've got a a creaminess behind that. But there's a richness. There's peachy touches, and actually, almost the, the sort of the lemoniness and the richness of the fruit notes give it a sort of a lemon meringue pie note. It's really quite vivid. Wait, and once you picture it, it's difficult to get it out of your mind. So let's have a taste, shall we? wine is lovely and mouth filling but it's not huge it's got good acidity there's a nice freshness coming through that's medium to full body you start off with a sort of a peachy fruit those lemony notes giving lovely crispness and then all of a sudden there's a really vivid burst of sort of pineapple flavor it's that richness combined with the good acidity and a sort of a slightly honeyed fruit touch yet maintaining that freshness right the way through there are notes of butterscotch, slightly buttery notes. There are some quite typical malolactic conversion and lees aged notes coming through here. But actually, they're not overblown. They've got a, a nice delicacy. They're fairly gently presented and well in balance. Strangely, the 15% alcohol really isn't standing out. I mean, there is some warmth coming through, but it's more ripeness of fruit that I'm tasting at the end of this. And the lemony crispness is, is allowing that, again, that lemon meringue pie note. Once you're coming out of the pineapple notes, the lemon meringue pie sort of flavours are coming through again. It almost, I mean, I don't know, I would assume there's not actually physical sweetness in this, you know, more than about four or five grams, but actually that the ripeness of the fruit is showing through almost a sort of sweetness on the finish as well as the mid palate. There's nice length, there's good intensity. I'm actually more impressed with this wine than I thought I was going to be. I was expecting, particularly because I'd seen it was 15% alcohol, that it was going to be huge and overblown. Actually, it's good acidity, prevents that. It makes me think that the wine probably has you know, four or five years worth of age in the cellar and would come out sort of probably with additional elegance as it ages. And yet at the same time, it is delivering quite a lot of that sort of ebullient, rich, barrel fermented, ripe, New World Chardonnay style. So, yes, I'm really impressed with that, actually. So that was a Chalon Estate Vineyard Chardonnay from 2021. I hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you have, do please press the like button. Please consider sharing the video with your friends. Do also think about following us on YouTube. It would be great to have your support. And also, we'd love to get your feedback. So please leave any comments you have about the wines, about the tastings we're doing, or anything else related to that in the comments box below. We'd love to see what you have to say. Most importantly, though, I hope you'll make some time. Join us for another tasting in the very near future. Bye for now.